Hey everyone, I'm Joel Green and welcome into Curiosity Quest, the show that continues to explore what you, the viewer, are curious about. Now today, our quest letter came to us from Charlotte, North Carolina. Chan wrote, Dear Joel, I'm curious, how do they make chips? Well, Chan, as you can imagine, this is a very popular subject. We are out here in Rancho Cucamonga, Southern California. We're at the Frito-Lay factory where we're going to learn how they make chips. So let's begin today's Curiosity Quest. Grab a snack. Let's go. the Frito-Lay factory and I'm here with Manny, Manny, my tour guide. Tell me, how long have you been here? Joel, I've been here 14 years. Currently, I'm running the uh, corn business unit. We make products such as Cheetos, Flamas, Tostitos, Doritos, Fritos. <laughs> uh, there's three, four different types of Fritos that we make here, so we're gonna really dig into that today. We've been making Fritos corn chips since 1932. Wow! Well, and the key thing there is, We've held on to the same basic principle of making the Frito. It's corn, oil, and salt. Oh, so wait a minute, that's it? That's, that's how we're making the whole chip? That is the mystery behind Frito's corn chips. Well, there's the show, guys. You know how chips are made? Let's go. <laughs> no, I'm just I'm totally kidding. I'm totally kidding. We're going to actually see how they're made today. Absolutely. You're going to see from beginning to end what it takes to deliver a package of Frito's corn chips today. Okay, and what's our first step? First step is to get ready with the proper PPE. For those that don't know, PPE is? Personal protective equipment. Mm. Let's do it. This is, come on, come on. What, what is that? What, what, what's going on? Come on? Now, are we ready? We are finally ready to go to the floor. Let's go! <laughs> Fun fact, fun fact, fun fact. Here's your fun fact. Did you know that farmers plant corn on every continent except the Antarctica? Man, what is up? We get all our PPEs on, you take me to the factory, and have that aroma just hit me and go, oh my goodness. So tempted, but I won't. And now we're back outside. What's up with that? I wanted to show you the mystery called the rail cars. <laughs> okay, we actually have rail cars that come to our facility to actually deliver our raw material. So since we're talking about Fritos corn chips, we wanted to take you out here to actually show you how we get our corn. Take me from the beginning. Where is this corn coming from, first of all? It's grown in the, in the states. It's actually from Nebraska, okay. uh, most of it. They're basically coming in through these rail cars, and then, and then you say they have to go in these silos right here? Yeah, so uh -huh. once we offload it, uh -huh. we, we have to offload it into the silo. How, how do you offload it? You got people shoveling like it? No, I'm just kidding. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> How's it Absolutely done? Absolutely not. We actually have a fully automated system. Uh, once it's enabled, we will actually have a drag chain from here that's set up underground. Oh. And it goes underground, and then it'll come out of the underground and go straight into the silo system. So this is the stock, the raw materials, as you said, to make all the chips. Absolutely. How big are these silos? How, how much corn do they hold? So these silos are actually about four stories high. Whoa. And they have a capacity of approximately over 200,000 pounds of corn each. 200,000 pounds of corn. Yeah. That's a lot of corn. A lot of corn. How long does it take you to go through one of those silos? We actually get a chance to turn over a silo within a week's time frame, depending on production. You're telling me that in one week you're going through 200,000 pounds of corn? Yeah, absolutely. Do you know how many pieces of corn are in every chip? 
That would be a challenging one to figure out, but I'm sure we can do the math on that and get, oh, get wait, 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 ow, ow, wait, wait, did you say math? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right, I'm sure it's a math problem, right? Yeah. We're in the math world, so yeah. we can probably figure it out. We'll definitely get you close to that answer by showing you how do we convert corn into the masa that it takes to produce a chip. Now that sounds like science now. Yeah. Wait, we have math and science on me. Yeah. All right. We're going to send you away with a PhD from here. So. Wait, plenty of hardy <laughs> Doritos. There you go. PhD, got that? So. Getting the corn off of here, opens up, conveyor under the uh, ground where we're standing. Right. And then it's put in these big silos. Right. And uh, what's next? And then once we have it in the silos, we'll actually, as the system needs it, we'll, we'll transfer it from the storage to actually the cleaning process, which is the next step of our uh, corn treatment. Okay, we're clean, but let's go. Let's go see how the corn is clean. I'm following you. All right, let's go. What are chips made out of? Um, sometimes they're potato and sometimes they're corn and sometimes they're even uh, veggies and fruit. Potatoes. Or? Hmm. Uh, vegetables. Uh, potatoes. Or corn. Or maybe vegetables, other vegetables. Potatoes. Carbohydrates and um, whatever fruit or vegetable they're sticking into the chip flavor, artificial flavoring. Corn, starch, <laughs> and other stuff. Depending upon which one, corn. Okay. Or corn or um, potatoes. Manny, how do they clean the corn? So as we saw at the last stop, once the corn is shot over, mm -hmm. uh, this is the first cleaning process where it starts. So the first piece of equipment, what it does is it actually sifting the corn. What it does is it loosens up the husk and it also filters out the broken or chipped or small size or big size corn. When you say husk, are, are you just talking about like a kernel of corn? Yeah, I'm talking about the layer outside of the corn. And you're trying to get rid of that? You're trying to remove it to allow for more consistency for the corn to be able to cook and then produce the masa that we need to get out of the corn. Wow, and what's that noise I keep hearing? That is the air system that's moving the corn over. <laughs> that is that's loud. That's loud, and it's all fully automated. You're working even though you're not working right now. Yeah. From the sounds of it, nothing's working. Ah, there, look at that. There it is again. Timing. We did not audio doctor that. I want you to know that. That wasn't us. <laughs> that was good timing. All right, let's go. <laughs> All right, Manny, the temperature changed. It's like warm in here. What's going on? Yeah, so this is the next stage of the corn cooking process. Here, we're going to actually cook the corn that we shot over from the corn cleaning room. Okay. So wow. what our purpose in this stage is to break down the corn and to make it more consistent by cooking it in heat and water. Oh, wow. Uh, from there, the next stage is once the corn reaches at that point, it gets uh, transferred over to the soap tanks. As you can see, it, it's going to fill it up to the desired uh, level, which is monitored by the, the meter. Mm -hmm. And at that point, uh, the corn sits there for several hours. And it looks like butter. So what you want to see as a visual check is the golden color of the water that you see. So you didn't add any butter to that. That's just the... The yellowness you get from the starch in the corn along with breaking down along with the actual color that the corn has, which is a yellow color. So okay. that's where you get the yellow from. So after it sits and soaks for several hours, no exact time, then what? We can show you what it looks like uh, at the point where the soap tank is getting empty. Uh, so this soap wow. tank is actually getting emptied. As you can see, Outside of corn, there's actually some other type of buildup that you see in there. Yeah. That buildup is actually the separation of layers of corn. And we have pumps underneath that are going to basically move the corn with water through the pipes onto the processing line where we're going to actually do the final treatment of the corn. You know, it's amazing because when I look at this right here, I, I can see remnants of what was corn. Right. I mean, it looks familiar. It looks like cream of corn almost. Right. And so this is, I mean, in all these vats that are filled with water, this is what's underneath that water. That's what you want to see because that has removed the unneeded uh, layers of the corn that 
it originally had. Okay. okay. So at each step, our goal is to filter the corn to the point where we get to the, the true core of the corn, mm -hmm. and that's where we convert into masa. So we're going to test you at the end to find out what exactly is masa and what does it look like. <laughs> I'm guessing it looks something like this. You would be wrong. It looks nothing like that. <laughs> All right. Fun fact, fun fact, fun fact. Here's your fun fact. Rito's original corn chips are made with the exact same ingredients today as they were in 1932. Corn, oil, and salt. All right, so basically what you're seeing over here is uh, the corn is coming over from the corn cooking room uh, through these pipes, and it falls into this hopper. Okay. This hopper is our storage hopper, and from there, it enters the tumbler. Whoa! Whoa! So, this is the last point where the corn is going to be cleaned with water. So at this stage, our goal is to remove any kind of buildup, all the loosened husks that we saw in the corn cooking phase, yeah. and get the corn kernel completely clean. From here, it falls into the conveyor, where it, it yeah, goes I see upward. it right below me right there, yeah. That's pretty much it. So obviously, Corn is on the conveyor belt and moving at a very slow pace. Right. And I see different, like, looks like white corn, yellow corn, like you said, a mixture. Close to 50% of each. Now, what's all this water? Is this a recycled water you're that talking about? That is recycled water. Oh, okay. It's all the stuff that clean. You're right. Cool. And what's that, what's that feeling I just felt up here? So what you just felt is, once the corn gets cleaned and drained, it enters this area. This is a small hopper. Right here you have the grinder. Okay. And this is where corn turns into masa. What is masa? I think it's something you can eat that's ground up, but maybe like a hummus? The outside of a corn? Another word for corn. I know that it's something that um, Native Americans used in the past, and I believe it's something that you can eat. Ground corn? Masa, uh, ground corn. Type of plant Native Americans used to use in their year. What is masa? So this is pretty cool stuff. We went from this to this. If I follow the process correctly, this is corn. But corn that has been consistently picked, cooked, and cleaned. So that's where the consistency and the uh, stabilizing of the corn comes into play. Look how fine the masa is, and it's very consistent. And what that in turn turns into is a It's like thick. It's like really thick. And as you say, it's what? It's very consistent. <laughs> so as you can see, there's not a lot of layers left on the corn. Yeah. All the husk is removed, and this corn is ready to be grinded into masa. All right. So once you have your masa, what do we do with it? Now, after masa, our goal is to convert it into shakes of Fritos corn chips. Okay. And from there, it goes right into the fryer, and it gets cooked, and from there, it goes right into seasoning. Can we see that? Absolutely. All right, so hold this. See it. Fun fact, fun fact, fun fact. Here's your fun fact. Hey, check it out. Did you know that January 29th is National Corn Chip Day? This is what our true Fritos line will look like, where it's all enclosed. Yeah. So our masa flows through the hopper into the, the top secret machine that cuts the Fritos corn chip. Which I see right behind me here, right? Right. Wow. So here you can see ah, the actual finished product coming out of the fryer. You'll notice how much the fryer is enclosed. Yeah. That's because of Again, safety number one. We got to make sure our people are safe. So we want to keep them away from the hot oil. Along with, we want to ma uh, manage the oil from getting oxidized. So okay. that the more it's exposed to oxygen, it breaks down the oil. So we don't want that. How long from the time it's up top till right here? No more than 15 minutes. 15 minutes. Ballpark, yeah. Wow, that's, that's pretty quick cooking. And I can see, it looks like it's pretty hot coming out too. Right, it's very hot. You're actually not supposed to touch the uh, product until it reaches the seasoning phase. That's where you can use a bucket to actually take the product to go test it. 
Where's the seasoning phase? Now you want to go taste the product and see the finished product. Wait, wait, is that a question? Yes. Yes. What is your favorite chip? Uh, cool Ranch Doritos. I really like Sun Chips. The Ruffle. Uh, salt and vinegar chips. My favorite chip are plain potato chips. <laughs> Doritos. Um, probably the Frito chips. I like the uh, I like Doritos. Um, but yeah, Fritos. Frito Lay's. Lay's chip uh, with lemon. Fritos. What's going on in this tumbler? So now this will be the last time you'll see a tumbler in the Fritos corn chip process. You're actually, this is the last step in processing where we're gonna apply the seasoning. So what we're running today are the original Fritos corn chips. Uh -huh. So we're applying salt onto the chips at this stage. So when, when it's tumbling, it's obviously at the right temperature. Right. And what's, what's happening? Your season's being put on it, huh? So what you're trying to do with the tumbling process is to gain consistency of seasoning. There we go. There's that word again, consistent. OK, all right, go ahead. You don't want chips to be layered on one another, so you want it to be tumbling so that you get constant seasoning coverage on all of the chips. From there, it comes out. We have a quality check where our team members will come here and actually check the percent seasoning content of our uh, in our chip okay. and based off of that make adjustments to the machine. I don't see any team members around, so maybe I should step in. That's their way of saying you should be running the line by now since you've gotten the full training. I promise you I'll be fired in a second. This is quite a stairway you have going up here. This is headed into packaging. How many are in each scoop approximately? During a shift, we, we are able to produce anywhere around above 20,000 bags a shift. 20,000 bags a shift. Yeah. Is that just a corn chips or is that? Corn chips. Oh my goodness. Now we're headed into packaging where it all comes together. Right, so we're up on the what, second or third floor? This is the second level, so the product that you see here is actually coming from our distribution level where you saw the belt go up at the top. This is actually a weighing system that helps regulate the right amount of product going into it each bag. Wow. So depending on the bag size, you're going to see the quantities differ in how many go in each of these buckets. So and it's weird because as I'm looking down, it looks like two, possibly three, uh, what are these, whatever these are called, are opening. Right. So the intent behind that is you're trying to get the perfect combination which the machine figures out for you in order to get the right weight in the bag. Before we started, we actually had to wait a few seconds for it to start. And you said it stops and starts based on what? So the bag maker downstairs that makes the bag actually regulates this machine. Oh. So that machine is connected to this machine, and they're both connected to the point where this feeds that machine, so it's a push-pull standpoint. Okay, so if, he, if he's overwhelmed, it'll just stop, basically. Right. Okay, which right. so far he's not, because this thing's going the whole time here. Right. Our goal is for this to never stop. Oh, okay. Earlier I asked you how many pieces of corn were in a uh, corn chip. Do we have an answer yet? Well, right now you have a perspective of how many should be? By the end of the process, once you finish the obstacles we have in line for you, we're gonna then get you the answer if you earned it. If I earned it. If you earned it. I think I earned some chips is what I'm thinking. Yeah. All right, let's go to that then. All right. <laughs> you got a setup for me to be set up. Yep. You are finally at the last stage of the Fritos corn chip. I can touch something. We're gonna ask you to package five bags in a row. All right. You do that one time or one at a time? You got to try to do it one time. Oh, one time. OK. Yes. One, two, three, four, five. Make five. sure I get the numbers right. Like that? OK. That's pretty good. All, All right. right. All right. Whoa. OK. What's that? What's that? There we go. Yeah? There you go. Now you got to fold it in. There you go. Man, now what? So now you gotta check if there's a label on the case. Oh, it's a label, okay. All right, there's a label. Yeah. 
All right, and now we just put it on the pallet. Okay. Manny, I put gloves on. I got prepared for one box. Come on now, man. I'm ready to go. What are all those boxes over there? After looking at the complexity oh, yeah. you showed us. Oh, here we go, here we go. Uh, yeah. I think one box activity was good enough. Now, the one thing that we do want to go over is our quality wall process. Is this something that I can do? Yes, you will take part in that with me. Okay, do I need the gloves? You won't need the gloves. All right. Well, you can take the gloves home for gardening or anything else. All right, let's take the gloves home. All right. All right. Fun fact, fun fact, fun fact. Here's your fun fact. The number of chips consumed on Sunday for the biggest game of the year is 14,000 times. Manny, this is the part I've been waiting for all day. You've been teasing me by taking me through this factory and showing me all the corn chips and chips and oh my goodness, and now we're here to actually eat some of them, right? Yes, so we are actually going to eat. With a purpose. <laughs> with a purpose. <laughs> Eating alone is fun in itself, but we're actually gonna assess the product that we made with reference products. What does that mean? Reference is what a Fritos corn chip should look like based off of our historical recipe. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is the aim product that we should be making at all plants producing Fritos corn chips. <laughs> and as you can see, it requires a lot of strength to do this activity. I'm not eating enough and corn chips apparently. We want to start with a visual comparison of how close are we to our reference product. So what we want to look for is the chip color, mm -hmm. chip size. Uh, do we have a lot of bits and pieces versus old chips? Okay, so we're staring at this for a little bit longer than I can handle. Can we now do that? You can actually go okay. taste with the reference <coughs> and <coughs> tell me what you picked up. Corn. I really have that, that, that smell aroma of corn seasoning right there. It's good. So now that you've had that, now you can try the ones that we've produced at our plant. I've had a chance to sample each one several times. I don't know if I can tell the difference. I mean, I, I crumbled these up a little bit, but that's about it. And that's pretty much it. That's our product quality wall. And uh, mm -hmm. that pretty much ends our day of, you know, beginning from the rail car to finished product testing at the end to ensure our proper quality. By the way, earlier you were teasing me again uh, about, you were trying to, you know, we were trying to talk about how many pieces of corn are in one chip, and we are now gonna find out the answer. Drum roll, please. Hold on, hold on. Drum roll, please. Knowing how the day went, knowing all the information that we talked about, uh -huh. the answer to that question is top secret. Oh, come on, come on. People at home are going, what? Describe how this tastes. Crunchy and definitely corny. Has a corn taste to them. They're really crunchy and they're really delicious. Uh, grilled corn? <laughs> definitely corn. Um, crunchy. It tastes crunchy, tasty, edible. Corny? <laughs> well, yeah, corny, I guess. Crunchy. It's crunchy. And it's delicious. Well, I'm going to thank Manny and everyone here at Frito Lays in Rancho Cucamonga. And I especially want to thank you, Chan, for sending us on today's Curiosity Quest. Now, if there's something you want me to go out and explore, let me hear from you. Go to curiositywest.org, click on the Send Us on a Quest link, and simply tell me what you're curious about. And it could be you that sends us on our next tasty adventure. And remember, every tasty adventure begins with just one person's curiosity. So I wonder, what are you curious about? I'm Joel Green, and I'll see you next time. Now, I'm sure they want me to tell you that this truckload of chips is going to a store, but I hate to disappoint them. It's going home with me. All right, Danny, are we ready to roll? We're ready to roll. Let's go, man. Do you want me to come back on the weekend? We will call you back if this goes well to actually help us with the activity. So what do you mean, if this it is all going depends. Great. It all depends. It all depends. So can I climb the sidewalk? You can. Man, you're supposed to say no. Come on, we're, it's, a, it's a family show. You can, but I'm not. Uh, oh. No. <laughs> no, we're not climbing any silos. Okay. If you'd like to order a copy of this episode or a previous episode, visit us at www.curiositycueststore.com. 
The cost is $19.95.